Hi, I'm Steve Hopkins, and this is the Pong Now interview series, where we discuss table tennis with some of the best players and personalities in the sport. Uh, today, I have four guests, Del and Connie Swiris, and David and Donna Sakai. Uh, collectively, I have four Hall of Fame members, uh, but let me play with this uh, just for a little bit. I have one Triple Crown winner. Uh, 1971 was an amazing year for Connie. I have uh, one who has been a singles and doubles winner in every age group, David. I have one who was a Canadian Open champion, Dell. I have one from a table tennis royal family with a well-known father in the sport and a sister uh, also in the Hall of Fame. That's Donna. I have one who was a part of the ping pong diplomacy trip to China, Connie. Uh, I have four who were top junior players in their era. I have four who played, uh, four who have represented uh, the United States internationally uh, on a team. I have four who have won a doubles national championship. I have four where I have absolutely no way to begin to count all of your collective age group singles and doubles titles. And perhaps more importantly, I have four who managed to find their soulmate within the sport, a uh, part of an elite group of couples made up entirely of Hall of Fame members. Um, welcome everybody to the, the Pong Now Pongcast. Thank you, Steve. It's a Be pleasure. Here. To share this time with you and Connie and Dell. So, Thanks, um, Steve. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Connie. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to say thanks for inviting us and letting us share our uh, stories. So, so that's a perfect segue. Um, the, the goal of the interview series is to collect some great stories uh, and, and to hear them from the people that live them. So with that in mind, uh, my goal here is to steer a little, uh, but then to get out of the way and listen. Uh, so um, with that in mind, let, let, me start, let me start here. I, I know all of you are strong players as juniors, and while I don't plan to talk birth dates here today, uh, you're all <laughs> arguably in the same generation. When did you start seeing each other at tournaments? Well, for me, Steve, uh, Del and I were uh, actually really young. I was brought down to our local table tennis club when I was about uh, 10 years old or 11 years old. And Del's dad and my brother started our local table tennis club. So we started seeing each other about when we were 10 and 12 years old. Competed in city championships and so forth before we went on to state and in a national well david and i were not quite that young when we first met and he has a story that he loves to tell about uh, one of the our first meetings in what englewood california yes so i'll let him tell that story <laughs> it's not one that i like to really tell <laughs> but um, um I had just come off a tremendous match of, one of them was with Dell, who was like, uh, uh, Dell, Donna, and Connie were kind of like heroes to me. I had read about them in the table tennis magazine, and this was the first time that I think I was up close to the, all three of them. And um, I went to Donna, who was like, I think she was in the finals of five events. And, um, after coming off a, a really good match, I, I said, uh, Donna, uh, would you like to play mixed doubles at the next tournament? And she said, no, I don't think so. And I said, did you just see me play? And she said, yes. And I said, can you tell me why you don't want to play with me? And she says, uh, I don't think you're really that good. <laughs> and uh, I remember telling her, Steve, um, uh, that uh, one day she'll be on her hands and knees begging me to play. And, and that was it. I walked away. I, I don't what? dispute the story because I can't say that I remember it, but 
people who know David know that he has a propensity for a little bit of uh, exaggeration. <laughs> well, I have a similar story that uh, I can tell at that same tournament. Um, I was playing in the juniors. I was not a real top men player at the time. I was, I, I saw in the take, table tennis topics that I was ranked number eight in the juniors and Dave was seated number seven. So uh, we weren't, we weren't uh, household names in the men's event, but during the tournament, Connie had played in the uh, mixed doubles with junior mixed doubles with Ralph Childs and she had played in women's doubles with Donna and her and I had played when we were real young, but we, we hadn't played mixed doubles since we were, since I was 12 and she was 10. Wow. But I started asking her if she would just play in the mixed doubles, just for fun, just play. And she said, no, I don't think I better. <laughs> and I said, well, why not? Well, I don't think I better. And um, finally, she agreed to do it. And we actually ended up getting to the finals of the mixed doubles in, and lost to Donna and Bobby Fields in the finals. And uh, like Dave, you know, it's not a story you like to tell about you know, initial rejection, but uh, eventually Connie and I then from that point on, we, we played mixed doubles and we always got to the finals of every time we entered, except for only three times in, in our career from 1964 to 1973 when, when Connie uh, had Todd and, and stopped playing. So we, we, it's good, good that she, she agreed to play that time. I think uh, I think Donna and I had high standards. <laughs> well, I would hope so, especially with men. I mean, it looks like you had high standards. <laughs> well, that and, and, that tournament really put everybody on the map. I, you know, if you look back um, at the results, um, another experience that I had was that I played Dave in the semifinals of the junior singles and Dave beat me uh, three straight but he had previous to me he had beaten Alex Salcido who was the defending champion from the year before and was the number two seed so um, Dave took me out of that tournament I remember that at that time, the loop drive was first coming into uh, existence and people were starting to use it more readily. And he had, he had this good loop drive and, and uh, gave me a lot of trouble. I, I lost three close games, but still three straight. Well, 1964 was the first of two women's doubles championships that Connie and I um, played together. And I, quite frankly, I don't remember how we teamed up, really, you know, if it was there, if we, in advance, if we had arranged it. But then, um, interestingly enough, then what, what year was it that we won the 65 women's doubles um, championships in Las Vegas? So, like, 50 years later, we go from the winning the women's doubles um, open to then the 65 women's doubles. Yeah, 50 years. That's incredible that we would even both be playing at that level that we could uh, could do that. Yes, uh, physically and everything. Yep. Right, yep. right. You know, I think I remember, Donna, that uh, Del and I were talking about this, that at that tournament, um, they didn't actually make up the draws for the doubles beforehand. Right. And that's why Dell and I were allowed to play mixed doubles together because you could enter at the tournament. I and see. I think the same thing happened maybe with our women's doubles because I don't really recall setting that up with you. Right, either. right. So just by happenstance, we get together and we play and win that championship. <laughs> that was incredible. We were juniors in high school. That's true, yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of fun. 
Yes. And then we we'll go on to win the 1965 U.S. Open. So we again. weren't, we weren't flukes. <laughs> we were. <laughs> no. <laughs> we were the real, real deal. <laughs> Yes. Well, or, or taking that back to what you said to David, um, clearly Donna was good enough uh, to be a partner <laughs> with you then, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, so um, shifting gears slightly. Uh, so we've already noted that there's four storied careers here. Um, but a lot of younger players know you more from your second act uh, than, than from when you guys were all dominant players. Uh, you've all reinvented yourselves on the senior circuit and you continue to compete um, and not just in the U.S. Uh, th does anybody have a favorite story about an international event? Well, I think we're at the 2016 World Veterans Championships in Alicante, uh, Spain. And that was just so special on just so many different levels, just the, the competition, we all played well. Dell especially did well in his age event, which I'm sure then he can speak to, but um, Connie and I had a good time playing uh, doubles, even, though, even if it was fraught with spills and falls. <laughs> <laughs> I took a tumble on my back, uh, Steve, going in, uh, after a ball, I fell right through the barriers, right smack on my back, and uh, really did not think uh, I did manage to finish playing that match. Um, however, Donna and I lost in our uh, round robin group, so that put us into the consolation uh, group. And we had decided that maybe um, we shouldn't play in that because I wasn't sure if my back was going to hold up or be okay. But as a result of that, um, they didn't get the message that we weren't going to play in the constellation. And they entered us anyway. So when the next morning when I woke up, I was fine. And I said to Donna, let's try it. And we got all the way to the finals of the constellation. So uh, even though we were getting older and falling around, as Dell would say, we've fallen, but we are getting up. <laughs> and then no, after, we, go ahead we um in alicante what's interesting is you know some pe people may think well that's just a uh, you know a bunch of people that get together but the standards is really high because mm -hmm. i remember dave played in a group of four and the top two go out and the the bottom two don't go to the uh open draw and dave was in a group where he was not able to make it out and i mean if you can think about that as good a player as dave was and then danny similar played he got out of his group but he lost in the in like the second round of the over 60 singles but the two of them together dave and and dan played the doubles and they made to the semifinals and lost to the champions in the semifinals. And uh, they really had to play well to, to, to be dominant like that and to get to the, the uh, semifinal round. Thank you, Del. <laughs> yeah. You played great well, in well, <laughs> Yeah, you I did. Played the other single. Uh, One point here on the earth, you're in the medal round. I, I, I played in that tournament, and I, I didn't realize that I really had a great sh And I wish I would have known, because I, I got beat when there were 16 players left, and I got beat by somebody who uh, chopped uh, with the backhand with, with the junk rubber, and who, um, you know, he had a pretty good forehand. It wasn't overpowering, but it was placed well. And I, I lost three games, 12 to 10, and I won two games, 11 to four. Mm -hmm. And uh, to lose uh, Deuce in the fifth to somebody is pretty discouraging. But, um, but I did make, I actually beat the guy in, in the, 
third round, I beat the guy that was second place and over 75 in Las Vegas. So, wow. wow. I, Going back to that experience, I mean, clearly it was just a wonderful experience. Our first time for all of us going to a World Veterans Championships. But then additionally, just personally, it was so, it was very, I mean, it was a special moment in my life being able to spend time with Connie and Dell. I don't know why I'm breaking up like this, but <laughs> we all went to Barcelona afterwards and um, spent time together playing at the local club, as well as socially going on tours and having dinners. So it's really just very memorable for me. Yeah, and that was the tournament where Dave and Dan uh, accepted the invitation uh, oh. or the accepted the, the fact that the World Veterans was going to come to the United States and they held up the banner and uh, that was a proud moment. Yes. <laughs> yes. A proud moment that came to fruition um, very dramatically and very successfully. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, that was the first time in 2016 I really uh, came to know what the World Veterans Championship was all about. Yeah. I had never played in any kind of tournament connected with that at all. Um, and I just couldn't conceive it. But I mean, here we are starting at age 40 and over in all these different age divisions all over the world and it has like 6,000, 7,000 participants in it and um, all high quality uh, players who Con were Connie, good. Are, is that 6,000, 7,000 including all the feeder tournaments or are they, is it that number at that one big event? It's that number at that one big event. Wow, it's huge. It is and uh, the quality of play, Steve, is unbelievable. Um, and the thing is, it runs so smoothly because of the fact that you can only enter your respective age division in women's singles and women's doubles. There's no mixed doubles. There's no anything else but your age division. And so it runs really smoothly. And it's just a beautiful time for socialization, especially if you love the sport. Uh, you get to meet people from all over the world uh, that you may have even competed with in world championships before. Very nicely said. All right, so I'll, I'll do a little more steering here. Um, you, you mentioned uh, raising the banner and accepting uh, the, the U.S. bid and bringing it to Las Vegas. So um, in 2018, I was doing uh, articles uh, on the, the World Veteran Table Tennis Championships, and, and I know that I wrote the name Sakai and Sueris a couple of times. Um, what was it like having that championship uh, here in the U.S., and how did everybody do? Well, um, really, um, uh, Connie and Donna did fantastic. Um, uh, Connie uh, got a bronze medal in the singles. Donna got a silver medal in the singles. Um, I got to the last 16 in uh, uh, my age group. Um, Dell was not able to uh, participate because of an injury, but uh, it was just uh, a tremendous um, experience. It was um, it was a, the best tournament I've ever been to. Not even close. Yeah, I remember uh, playing the singles division, and I had won, I think it was either my first or second match, and uh, Donna was playing down the, the way, and so I finished, and I went down to root her on, and she was in, I believe, the third game, and um, she was down and came all the way back up and deuced it and won to go on to the next level. And um, I just remember thinking she almost lost that match, and yet she hung in there and won it. And um, that was really neat. And Donna and I, every day, we'd come back to the hotel and say, well, we're in the next round. And we said, <laughs> wouldn't that be something if we ended up in the finals together? But uh, 
are against each other. And but I managed to lose to this gal uh, in the semis, and then Donna met her in the finals. But then together, Donna and I won the, or uh, got to the finals of the ladies doubles and got a silver medal. We lost to the Chinese team. We let that slip through our fingers, as it were, but. <laughs> yes, we did. We won the first game and I think then lost the next uh, two or three. Going back to that singles uh, match you were talking about with me, that was, was the fifth game. Oh, the fifth game. I was okay. down 10 6. And I came back and won. So I, I joke that I used up my total allotment of luck in that <laughs> one match. <laughs> yeah. What, what but that was, was fun too because even in advance of the um, of the tournament, Connie and Dale came out to our home in Las Vegas and spent um, almost a week. Connie and I played quite a bit, practiced both singles mm -hmm. and doubles. Sadly, Dell played, but he was in a lot of pain, as I recall, um, and then yeah. ended up not being able to play in the actual tournament itself. What I remember about that, Donna, too, staying at your house is uh, Dell and I like to play card games, and I know <laughs> Dave's a little bit of a card shark, and so we taught him well, a, new, no. <laughs> new, a new game called Salad Bowl. And, <laughs> It's a weird name, but it's kind of a fun game. And um, I think the first or second hand, you have to discard cards. And Dave discarded a funny card that I thought, hmm, I wonder if he really wants to discard that one. And uh, so I said something to him, and he kind of got that smirky smile on his face, <laughs> like, I know what I'm doing. And uh, anyway, it was the right discard. and. Uh, he, he uh, probably went on to win that game. I really don't know uh, if he did or didn't, but that was kind of fun. Here I'm testing uh, Dave's card shark playing uh, ability. Well, I was looking forward to um, playing that game again. What was it? Uh, when were we planning for? The end of March? Is that one? Yes. Yeah. Well, what what no, I don't gonna... understand is I'm really good at blackjack. And uh, the four of us go out, and uh, every time you and Dell win, <laughs> every time, and Don and I lose every time we go with you. That's well, all we I should know more often. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of one of the things I remember about the Las Vegas tournament was I was not able to play. Right. But I I kind of uh, re. I had a, a re enjoyed the fact that I was was kind of coaching, and um, I was coaching Connie, and I was also coaching Dave and encouraging Dave, and and also Donna, and they were all doing so well. But unfortunately, what happened was the three of them all had to play at the exact same time, <laughs> so I I ended up coaching Connie. And she played a girl from England that really she had no trouble with. She beat her three straight. And Donna also won her match down the line a couple tables away. But then Dave was playing down there, a, just a tremendous match. And I, I tried to move over to, to find myself near the table so that I could help him. And he was getting some assistance, but you know, he, he was in the fifth game and lost like deuce in the fifth. I missed your coaching. Well, I, I don't know if coaching. it would have done any good, but I, I just felt like we were, we were on our way. And, and you know, it, it's kind of crazy to say that because here I was just sitting there. You were doing all the work. But, uh, <laughs> well, you stayed me in Arizona. You yeah, made me recently. Finish. Yeah, we had another deal just recently in Arizona where we were out there, a lot of golf. And we weren't playing much table tennis. And Donna and Dave came to Arizona to play in the Phoenix Open. And Dave was playing these young kids. And he played, I guess, six. There were six in his group or eight in his group. And he had to work himself out of the group. And then he still had to play more matches once he got out of the group. 
And he kept saying, I don't think I can play anymore. I said, well, just play one more, just one more. And he, he finished in the semifinals. He was so tired that he didn't go there the next day and pick up his check or anything. <laughs> but but the, this, uh, the Dutch coach, I don't know what his name is, but he was so impressed with the fact that at our age that we still play and enjoy it and work so hard and still hold a high standard against these younger people. So it's, it's a tribute to, to us to keep going, see what we can do. Well, table tennis is sport for all ages. It certainly has helped me, I think, uh, physically, mentally, just overall health-wise, as I'm sure all of us would agree that it's helped. You know, one of the things that I was thinking about as all of us were talking, you know, that it's amazing that we started out so young and are in a second act and can really enjoy it. And for the most part, we're all healthy and, and able and physically to move as good as what we move. Um, but one thing that I noticed when I started coming back was all of what we call this junk rubber. Uh -huh. uh, when we started out as kids, it was all pimpled rubber. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you played with that, Donna, but yeah, that's... I Okay, uh -huh. I started right. out. Yeah, I started out with that. And then actually, I went to it was just a layer of sponge. I don't know if you remember that, but there was just a layer of sponge. Mm -hmm. And um, there was they no, it wasn't, it wasn't inverted. It was just a layer of sponge, oh. but they banned that right away. Oh, I, I remember having that. a, yeah, I had a racket with that. And then, then it went to the inverted sponge. Uh, with the pimples on the inside. But I re remember thinking when I first came back, um, I was playing in, a, in some type of a rating event and I was losing to this 65 year old man. And I was getting so answer. discouraged about it because I thought, <laughs> here I've been a national champion and I can't even beat this guy. If I push, the ball pops up. If I top spin it, it comes back with chop. And I'm thinking, what is this rubber <laughs> that right. we're dealing with? And um, most of the people in our age divisions nowadays do use either long pips or short pips. And we've learned, we've always joke about, oh boy, we got to play another junk rubber player. <laughs> so that was so different for me when I came back. So true, yes. I, I, I want to say, you know, it, it's been a long time that dell has been coaching me. Not, not just on the table, but off the table as uh, oh. his firm has been uh, uh, the accounting firm that my company has used. And he's given us such good advice that, uh, you know, I don't have really have a chance to thank him, but uh, he's been coaching me a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, most of the time, uh, you know, I always say that there's, four things to a, a good client. Number one is that they ask for your advice. Number two is if it, if it sounds appropriate, they follow your advice. Number three is they pay their bill. And number <laughs> four, they refer you to others. And uh, this is uh, uh, something that I, I learned. And, uh, you know, Dave and Donna are, are very good clients. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that they did everything that I uh, suggested, but uh, they certainly did follow good principles. And that's the same thing. It's sort of uh, by coaching in table tennis, it helped me to be a better kind of coach in my career because, you know, you have to know exactly how to, uh, to express yourself so that they understand what what the benefit is that you're trying to tell them. And in table tennis, it's more physical. In, uh, in accounting and taxation, it's more the mental and, and uh, problematic thing. And so it, it's a, it's, it was good training for table tennis to teach me how to be a good accountant. Now, I thought for sure you were gonna compliment David on how he did his paperwork. <laughs> 
I, I always, <laughs> I would always compliment Dave because I would say you really did a great job to get all the information to me on time, <laughs> knowing full well that it was Donna behind the scenes again that was doing this work, and uh, that it's it's That's great to see doing. how the two of them work as a team, not only in table tennis and socially but also even in a business. And, and, I uh, double down on Connie. That's what I think of Connie. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, Dave, Connie, I, oh, go ahead. Well, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is, you know, when you talk about a second career, a lot of times people don't realize what, what we did away from the table. And now in, in some times, People know that I was a CPA, but a lot of people don't know that Connie directed a, a child care and daycare center for almost 20 years. She started it and uh, there was about 250 children in it with about 25 or so employees. And that, that um, program is still going very strong even though Connie's been retired from that for, for 10 years. Well, all these people we meet, and you're right, a lot of times we don't know what their other life is. But of course, now with the four of us, you know, being so uh, partners and friends and whatever, you know, we do have that background, that knowledge. I didn't know Donna was such a good cook until this quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen, you know, meal after meal, just, it's unbelievable, yeah. I'm so lucky. And have I, you enjoyed I, it, Donna? Pardon? Have you enjoyed it? No, I have not. <laughs> I remember I, when we were there, you, you were doing some of this where they would deliver meals. Not, not <laughs> that you did that all the time, but that was, that, that, that yeah, was that's always a lot good. easier. It, it's, um, but some of those places couldn't continue to do that. No. I've never, I've never cooked so much. Is that right, Del? Uh, Steve can get in there and edit some of this conversation. <laughs> yeah, if he wants to cut. Yeah. Right. This is it's great conversation. Now, uh, aside from, from Connie trying to get a word in edgewise and not being able to, so I should call on her now. What, what oh. were you going to say, Connie? Oh, I was just going to say I've never cooked so much either, even when my kids were <laughs> at home. I know. I'm not, yeah, it's getting a little tiring, to be honest with you. I know, it, yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna to have to get off this call soon so I can start my three course meal for dinner. So. <laughs> All right, let me let me move us uh, move us past the the food talk here for just a second. Um, when we do get past all of this quarantine, um, what 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 is the the next thing you guys are working towards? Is there another World Veteran Tour event? What 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 are you looking forward to later in the year or next year? The national uh, championships, um, the preliminary plan, I think, is to uh, go to Las Vegas in December at Mandalay Bay being everything being okay. So I think that's the next tournament. And then we'll be going to Bordeaux, I hope, uh, for the uh, world championships in 2021. It's been rescheduled from the, from the beginning of June. So that's... David and I were planning on leaving for actually Barcelona and then on to Bordeaux at the end of the month. But of course, all that has been postponed. So time will tell whether or not it will be, in fact, rescheduled and whether or not all four of us will go. Hopefully, yes to both. Yes. Yeah, Del and I were planning on going uh, also, and we were going to uh, make a stop in uh, Ireland and play golf for a couple of days and then go on to the the Bordeaux championships. So we're hoping that it all works out for next year. That's for sure. All right, guys. So that, that's probably a pretty good place uh, to, to cut things off here. I, um, I really appreciate all of you taking the time uh, to chat today. Um, I think others are really going to enjoy listening to um, it's, it's neat to get the stories directly from the people that lived them. Uh, and having the four of you on screen at the same time and getting to see all of the reactions and the, and the, the interaction between all of you is, is pretty fascinating as well. 
Um, so anyway, th thank you very much for coming today and thanks for joining the podcast. It was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank right, you. Guys. We're us together.